All right, welcome everyone to our first semifinal with Lou90 up against Anti-Rad. Casting with me for this match will be Atmaz. Atmaz, how are you doing? Hello, Scorch. I'm doing great. I'm ready for this. Lou is bringing it right away. We're going to get a treat here. We're getting Three Wishes, Day of the Dragons, Game 1. Yeah, of course, we saw Lou in the opening round play this deck. Actually, in the exact uh, matchup, uh, Anti-Rad bringing the red-yellow burn, which we saw Lou actually lose this matchup. So we'll have to see if uh, he can kind of right the ship and win game number one here. Red-yellow burn, that combat burn from Anti-Rad, typically usually able to get damage done very quickly in the game and end games quickly, especially against control matchups. There's a lot of damage going towards the orb. There's Sheet and Brutes. Uh, for instance, if you get one of those next to the opponent's orb, that's five damage, uh, regardless of any Gift of Steel buffs every single turn. So Lou here, obviously, with the slower deck. First of all, Day of the Dragons. Um, uh, yeah, we're missing the middle card here. That <laughs> looks like for Lou, there might be a little display <laughs> flag. But uh, yeah, Day of the Dragons. This is not a card we have seen in a monthly cup, and I don't know how many months this is in the monthly cup, by the way, but in a, in a major tournament in... And I don't know how many months, but here it is. Lou does have one in his deck, and of course, the three wishes. Um, so if you let Lou sit back long enough, if Anti Rad does, he's going to have a tough time. But as we saw, Anti Rad's opener, one mountain in front, that's typically an aggressive opening. So I don't think he's going to try and give him that opportunity. Yeah, especially with these other creatures that he's drawn into here the Underground Brigand, the Shed and Brute, coupled together with that Kaleem's training once he gets to those desert requirements, can allow him to accelerate towards Lou's creatures very quickly. And we see him go for the Brute here to try to contest that Water Elemental before Lou is able to get set up. Because, like you mentioned, if you give a Three Wishes deck time, it is going to just get an immense amount of value over the course of the game. Yeah, this is very much like a mid-range opening uh, Anti-Rad's doing. He's going for one side of the wells, most likely. You're going to go down the line. Um, and as we see, Lou here is a typical control opening. If you haven't uh, seen Aquablad's recent Fairy Academy articles, you should because it's, ex it's exactly out of the books. Um, control opening versus mid-range opening. Um, we'll have to see how it plays out. There is a comms training in hand for Anti-Rad. If he wanted to, it does get you flying. Um, oh, no, he's actually short of a devil, so he wouldn't be able to. <laughs> but he is going to keep that sheet and brute forward. Uh, keep in mind, next turn he will be able to play Columns Training, and that gives him a lot of mobility over the water. No flash winds in hand, though, to uh, dance around. Not entirely sure if he runs those in his deck. Um, nope. Oh, yes, he does actually run three flash winds, so possibility yeah, to draw one of those. Generally a combo that we see together once you're able to give them that flying and, and specifically the charge using that flash wind for the extra mobility just allows you to get these creatures into the right spot. It's something that red really struggles with and the red burn for a long time throughout Furious history. We only saw generally something like the Scourge Flame Spectre, maybe Soul Drains as the yellow splash. And this deck has kind of evolved to the point where it runs these Kaleem's training, the flash wind for the extra mobility, something that red really has a weakness at. And look what is in hand for Lou. It is it. The Day of Dragons. Now, I don't know if he's going to have a chance <laughs> to play it anytime soon. But remember, that is a neutral card. And you don't have to have all uh, the lands to play the card. It's just a lot of Feria to invest in. And, you know, with all this force coming at you, this Sheet and Brute, this Underground Brigand farther behind, you kind of want to have answers for this. Now, he is building up towards the Three Wishes with none in hand. And it's important to note that anti Red has no Gift of Steals. Yeah, I think this isn't too bad for Lou because if you know a couple turns from now if he decides to go for day of dragons he set himself up in a position with the lands that he's placed that he could really go for any of the dragons right now garadin looks like a great one because it'll eliminate the two three underground brigand it'll eliminate the three three of the shed and brood if it fights with the water elemental here and that's something that lou could set up with uh, i'd like to touch on actually the wood elemental play off to the left side because anti rad was moving so quickly up the right with his creatures that switch for lou to have a guaranteed collector on the far side could actually be very impactful over the course of the game and there we saw a flash wind come out just to clear up that water elemental get a little damage done to the orb and a follow-up columns training which uh is that's a surprising play to me but what he's doing is putting his uh units in a more forward position that underground brigand threatens the board or threatens the orb next turn remember when a combat unit attacks the orb you do gain that combat bonus from it so he can gain that feria um and yeah, what does Lou have to answer this? He has a Frogify, which he could play this turn. That could be very useful. Um, but he's going to draw cards first with his Lore Thief, and that, that makes a lot of sense. We have a failed experiment, and which is not going to do very much good in this hand. We have no creatures. So it looks like he is going to have to go for the third link. And uh, hmm, he has the option of Aurora's Creationing, but you know, in this deck, 
you know what you're saving those for. Those are for the yeah, Jags. Goes for the desert here, actually, to set up a position where he can go mountain into his uh, three wishes if he draws it next turn. Uh, I really like the play that Anti Rad went for with the full a- aggression, like we've been talking about, just pushing up as quick as possible. Um, still two lands away, actually, from that Scourge Flame Spectre, so I would expect him to continue to develop lands rather than drawing cards. And yeah, that is what he goes for with the mountain play here. Unfortunately, won't be able to push with the Underground Brigand. Um, the orb damage here, but could put it in a position just where it blocks the wood elemental from moving into a more defensive spot. I like the way you pronounce brigand. I like your emphasis on the syllable. <laughs> I'll say brigand though. Um, and yeah, now there's two brigands right next to the orb, and you know he didn't get to attack with that uh, the one brigand under the orb last turn because of that wood element elemental's defensive position. Thirteen life oh. though for Lou. He's down, and look at his hand. Just another failed the, experiment. The second failed experiment picked up actually means Lou could go Day of Dragons. Failed experiment, failed experiment into Garadin and clear most of the board here from Anti-Rad. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Day of the Dragons, he gets all the dragons failed. Oh my god, you're right. Wait, yeah, wait no, he cannot... He'll have to Day do of, one this turn. Right, yeah. Yeah, Day of the Dragons reduces the cost of the dragons down to six. Oh. No, because... No, he can't do... He doesn't have the fair for that. He doesn't have the fair for all that, what you're talking about. Because Felix ah, that effective. card off the, the side that we weren't seeing was a Three Wishes. Oh, the bug. Okay, so there's been a display bug this match, and he's been hiding a Three Wishes under his sleeve. <laughs> it's like a poker game. He's hiding it under his sleeve. So, okay, Three Wishes comes out. Now we're seeing what's happening. That's why he was going for the deserts and the mountains, because he did have a Three Wish in hand. He didn't need to draw it. And it happens that he draws a Scourge Flame Spectre, which he's unable to play this turn. And two columns training. Hmm, where does that leave him? He could use it on the Lord Thief to clear, but... It's a pretty uh, desperate move. Yeah, and it does give your opponent the extra feria here from these underground brigands. <laughs> but it looks like that is either the play he's going to go for of clearing one of those, uh, just because then the wood elemental sets up to clear off uh, possibly the shed and brood on an upcoming turn. But anti rat actually still in a very good position, going to be able to get to the deserts for the Scourge Flame Spectre this turn and just continue to pump through this burn damage. And the Scourge Flame Spectre is really... Not a not a card you want to be drawing from your opponent's deck um, right now. You're two special lands away from playing the Scourge Flame Spectre. While it is a good card, it's going to take a while for you to work up to it. And there's the opponent's Scourge Flame Spectre. He knew that was coming because he played three wishes. Um, and now he's down to 13 life plus, or I'm sorry, minus six. So seven life against this combat burn deck. This is very difficult to deal with without any sort of healing. Three wishes will help. Yeah, very difficult. You're essentially already dead at this point, just waiting for your opponent to draw into what they need. Even if Lou's able to clear the board at this point, you know that a red-yellow burn is running things like Flame Burst, which can target your orb. Even Cypher's Wrath, once Lou is able to find some creatures to play onto the board. So he really needs to either find something off of the Three Wishes to play, and he knows one of them is going to be a Kaleem's Training, and the other is going to be a Scourge Flame Spectre. Oof. Okay, so he's using both the failed experiments preemptively because he knows his hand will be full. Otherwise, he doesn't have any creatures he can play. Uh, and the failed experiment only works on the turn you play it. So it's pretty much wasted, um, unfortunately. You know, you're right earlier when you're talking about the Day of the Dragon's Clear, which takes a little bit more fairy than 12 to do. That's exactly what he's thinking about with this sort of deck. Um, Garrett, and, <laughs> Garrett and failed experiments is pretty funny, and you'd see some Aurora's creation too. But he wasn't able to get up to that fairy yet. Um, so right now, what does he have? He has a Flame Burst. That is a short-term answer uh, to deal with the Sheet and Brood. And afterwards, because he does not have three wakes, lakes, he can't play either Frogify, which he would love to right now, um, to stop this extra three damage from the Scourge Flame. Oh, and the second Scourge Flame Spectre picked up here, and the Kaleem's Training just to top it off if he wants to go with that onto the Grim Guard as well. But Anti-Red will find the lethal, and uh, will take game number one off of Lou. You know, the deck takes a loss, but I gotta hand it to Lou. This deck, I didn't realize what he was gonna do until I until you explained uh, what his goals were um, with that sort of deck and what it can do. That deck seems really, really strong if you're able to hold off just a little bit longer. Unfortunately, this time he wasn't. So Anti-Rad will move on with this uh, combat burn deck and we'll have to see what Lou chooses, what he thinks uh, might be a good counter for, for this type of deck.
Yeah, so in round number one, uh, Lou, like I mentioned, was in exactly the same matchup and chose, just like he did now, this green-red as the response. So really liking this matchup uh, as the follow-up when he is facing, maybe it's just something when he's facing the burn list, or whether it's he thinks that it's the next strongest of his uh, decks. But worked out for him in round number one. Ooh, unfortunately draws the Crackthorn Beast right back after mulliganing in. And another display bug a bit off of uh, Anti-Rad's hand here. <laughs> it looks like I think what the players are doing is are putting the cards up their sleeves, uh, trying to hide it from their opponent. This is not allowed. <laughs> Let's be clear, this is not allowed in fairy tournaments. But these guys are trying to get away with it. We'll discipline them later. Um, yeah, Lou choosing uh, the green red. Um, his other option was yellow rush. I was taking a look at his other deck selection. So in his mind, against this combat bird deck, he wants to use his green red. And does have another early creature to go for with the grim guard here. Actually going to go away from Lou this time instead of the uh, previous game where he went towards where Lou's early creatures were building. So uh, we're going to see possibly a little bit of a, a slower game here and then he's going to build towards that Scourge Flame Spectre and maybe the Kaleem's training to get his creatures in at the orb and force Lou to come and respond to him. We'll Gift of Steel a great pickup here for that Grim Guard. And there we see a Gift of Steel. We didn't see any Gift of Steels in anti Rad's hand last time. He didn't have it in the early start and that's really what you want, especially against um, a deck that has no transformation, as in, you know, blue or hard removal, yellow. Um, so he can safely play that Gift of Steel and know that his opponent has to do the damage uh, to clear the unit. Um, keeping it back so it can harvest on that very well means that he can play the Columns Training to move up next turn to harvest both very wells. That's exactly why he's doing that. If he even has a Flashwind, he'll be able to attack the Orb afterwards, and that'll be a powerful turn if he draws the Flashwind. Yeah, it's that mobility that we talked about last game coming through again, if he's able to find that. But even just the Kaleem's training by itself pushes the Grimguard up into a position where uh, it will neither need to be responded with uh, by Lou just because it could move into a position where it can attack the orb. Unfortunately, he doesn't find a Flashwind to push the damage this turn, well, but... Keep in mind, though, he does have a hidden card that we don't know what's up his sleeve. He has four in hand, so there could be a Flashwind. That is true. Like, <laughs> it is only a spectating bug. You know, these players obviously can see it. But... Um, yeah, he has a card. We don't know what it is. Uh, it's kind of a fun game to play. Maybe we should keep it like this. Um, but it could be a flash <laughs> win. It could be something else. There's a second desert, so we're going to see the columns training come down. Uh, probably going to see that double harvest. Um, and we'll have to see what else he might drop. Probably Underground Brigand, I would imagine, behind to start harvesting from that back well, don't you think? Yeah, I definitely expect that to come down. A uh, card that requires generally at least equal investment in terms of Faria, uh, something like the Flame Burst that we see in Lou's hand, would clear the underground brigand but at exactly the same cost so you don't end up gaining any value but you don't lose any value either and because of this kaleem's training when you can push the grim guard up so aggressively right away it actually was a flash win that he was it was in hand there it uh, was the, the flash brigand, win. yeah the the one of the late ideas of this deck obviously the Scourge Flame Spectre that we see in Anti-Rad's hand, you need Seven Fairy to play that. So having these early collectors is very important for this deck. Uh, and even just when you make an aggressive play to leaving something behind, equally as important just because you do need that extra Fairy income later on in the game to go Spectre into Spectre uh, type of turns. Yeah, and now Lou on the back foot again. This combat bird deck is just so oppressive, especially with a great opening like this. Uh, Grove Caller is going to allow, with a Runin's Guidance, uh, a clear of this uh, Grim Guard. And wow, with the follow up Flame Burst, that's a board clear for Lou. And while he was on the back foot a second ago, and he is at 10 health, it's important to note against a burn deck, which is super dangerous. He has board control now, so. From this point on, he can start coming back. But what is Anti-Rad going to do? Well, he has Scourge Flame Spectre, so he wants to hit the face. Lou hopefully has healing in his deck because he's going to need it. Yeah, another big thing to point out there is the extra buff on the Ground Shaker that allowed it to clear was a Runin's Guidance. So that is some life gain lost now for Lou. Uh, so Anti-Rad will have that in the back of his mind. The trade, obviously, good for Lou. But okay, he doesn't have that much healing left, uh, so I can maybe punch through for a lethal damage eventually. Uh, interesting to see Lou step in a way that he didn't really block off the uh, Scourge Flame Spectre here with, with the Prairies instead of going for something like a Mountain in behind for the Cypher to come down on. Yeah, and I just looked at his deck list. He does run two of those Guidances, so by using one, he only has one heal left in his deck. And I really think this game is going to hinge on whether, well, depending on how much damage Anti-Rad can, can do, uh, before 
uh, Lou pressures the orb, it's going to depend a lot on whether he can get that extra healing. I don't believe there's a Radiance in, in hand, so it's going to be that last Rudin's Guidance he's going to need um, to boost himself up to a point where he's pretty comfortable against Burn. But Scourge Flame Spectre um, can be played this turn. It is worthy to note. He could smack it on the face and do five damage, uh, putting Lou in range of any number of ways of, of being destroyed, especially after you would imagine the Scourge Flame Spectre would be attacked afterwards. But Cypher would eat it whole, uh, is the point I'm getting to. Cypher would eat the Scourge Flame Spectre <laughs> whole and uh, become a giant Cypher. But um, that puts Lou in very, very dangerous territory. Yeah, the Scourge Flame Spectre, especially against Green Red, can't easily be dealt with. Uh, again, Green Red wants to just fight with their creatures. Um, and Scourge Flame Spectre is fine with you fighting against it because it probably already did damage to your orb, and it's going to continue to do that through the combat burn effect. Um, so I'm very surprised Anti Red didn't go for that. I do like the double prairie play that he went for because it definitely looked like Lou was setting up to go for a Grove Caller, and with this 9 6 Ground Shaker, could end the game very quickly. Uh, so a very nice adaptation there by Anti-Rad, even though he's not able to get to the Scourge Flame Spectre, uh, just because he is still one desert short, even on the next turn, still one desert short. Um, but down to eight now, it's looking very difficult for uh, Lou to kind of end the game before Anti-Rad draws into maybe even something like a Flame Burst to end the game. I mean, now all you have to do uh, is play Scourge Flame Spectre, attack the orb, and then if he ever attacks your Scourge Flame Spectre, Spectre again, you lose the game because it does three damage. So you have to heal. The only answer to a Scourge Flame Spectre right now is heal. Anti-Rad, knowing that, may be afraid um, to drop the Scourge Flame Spectre because it's, it's kind of all in. If your opponent heals back up, you you lose because you're ground, you have a ground shake in your face, nine damage in your face. Um, so he may actually be thinking, maybe I want to use the Scourge Flame Spectre defensively, clear the ground shaker, and um, uh, do three extra damage. But if you want to do that, it seems like you want to use your Sheet and Brute. Trying to see if there's any interesting lines right now for this Spectre to come down and attack something like the uh, Grove Caller on the left side uh, in the double collection and get that combat in now to set up for a Flash Wind on the following turn. But it doesn't look like there's anything quite there. Uh, Anti-Rad going for the heal actually means he doesn't have the Desert to play the Spectre, even though that Cypher's Wrath is a great pickup. Um, so we'll have to see another Crackthorn Beast picked up for Lou. Not quite what he's looking for in this spot, I don't think. Playing so defensively is anti-rad. Like, if he just played the Scourge Flame, that puts so much pressure on Lou. But, you know, this line of play as well is is pretty much uh, suffocating for Lou to deal with. It is slower, though. It gives Lou more chances to find answers. Um, he would have had to just have heal as an answer, <coughs> excuse me, as an answer to that Sheet and Brute. Now, he'll have to use... Okay, Crack Thorn Beast. This is important. Ooh, does oh, does get enough damage here. Yeah, okay, that worked out. There's actually a number of ways that could work out, and that is amazing, says Lou. Um, but actually, I think there's actually a fairly high chance um, for that to work out. Just need to land the Ground Shaker or uh, the, Sagami, the Sagami. But that worked out well in the fact that now anti Rat is on a one-turn clock. Um, he dies next turn any number of ways. anti Rat has to win oh, this Oh, no. Turn. What oh, happened? Lou not stepping Cypher over actually gives uh, the Scourge Flame Spectre an alley of attack here uh, because it can collect the one extra Feria, flash wind straight down oh. in between, and the Cypher's Wrath onto the 4-2 Warrior gives the extra bit of damage for the lethal. Oh, so unfortunate for Lou there that he didn't just step over that one space to block off the angle, but Anti-Rad finding the lethal in the end. But Scourge Flame Spectre with charge, I think even if he moved Cypher over, could have... He would have had to move the, the Sagami back. Is that correct? Um, I've already closed the screen, but I think that there is no way to block. Um, you couldn't just block with Cypher. You had to block with both that and the Sagami because Scourge and Fletcher has charge, right? Yeah, but he needed the one extra Feria off of the well. So it was that only one attack angle. Even the desert directly beside um, Lou's orb didn't provide the extra Feria that it needed. So the Flash Wind play was i think only the one angle again i'd have to check the vod like you're saying yeah. uh with having closed the screen i'm not sure of the exact setup but yeah i i think though that anti-red i think he gave lou more chances than he should have had by not going aggressive with the scourge point earlier like we saw it was one turn away from anti-red losing that game that was super close and i think it could have been a much easier win but of course you never know what your opponent has and uh it's sometimes best to play safe either way anti-red with going into game three with this combat burn deck carrying the load. It's 2-0 right now. Lou is down to his last deck against this. And it happens to be 
Yellow Rush. And what does Yellow <laughs> Rush hate? Grim Guards. Small amounts of damage. Combat <laughs> burn. Um, yeah, one so of one of the great things for Burn, uh, especially in this matchup against Yellow Rush, um, is, is it plays actually completely different from the way that we would have seen in those previous two games, where it is actually going to sit back super defensively with things like the Grimgar, with the Shed and Brute, constantly clear off whatever Yellow Rush plays, and deal that burn damage from afar until you get to the Scourgeling Spectres, and then maybe push those aggressively up the board. But double Grimgar to start off here, we see from Anti Rad, and this is actually already looking like a a very difficult position for Lou to, to deal with, but he does have that Choking Sands in hand that it seems like maybe teched in for this matchup specifically. Choking Sand is a great answer for Grimgar. Now, there are two to deal with, but what I like what anti Red did here is that we saw he's usually been opening mid-range with this combat deck, going down one lane of Fairy Walls, collecting them, then hitting the face. Seeing his opponent come at him with a Rush deck, he reacts differently, and this is very important, um, a very important skill that comes only with time and experience, that you know with your deck, you know your deck so well that you know how to shift it. So, okay, you're coming at my face. I'm going to shift into a control mode and put taunts down and just burn you down until I can get to a spot where I can end the game. Um, so this is just a show of experience having used this deck and knowing how to play it correctly. Yeah, and Lou, like we mentioned, does have that Choking Sand. Uh, picks up a great card in the Oradrim Monk here. Allow him to uh, attack the orb, cycle more cards into his hand that he can use. Uh, Shate and Demon, another great pickup here. We'll deal with maybe the second Grimguard. Uh, and even these followers. Ooh, I like that. Actually taking, yeah, that's actually a very smart play here by Lou. Uh, taking over that mountain means there are less places for Anti-Rad to actually play something like the Ground Shaker that he has in hand, because if he wants to move the Grim Guard back into a defensive position, it blocks the other mountain. So very nice uh, kind of adaptation there by Lou of taking the land instead of pushing that two extra damage to the orb. This would be such a perfect play if Anti-Rad didn't have a Ground Shaker, um, because it would allow... Um, it's still a great play. I mean, you don't you know what your opponent has, but it would put the yeah the Grimguard into a position where it would have to contest the Shaitan Demon and your little one health creatures survive. But Ground Shaker, he crashes the party. He says, "I hate yellow decks. I hate little weenie creatures, and you're gonna have to deal with that, Mr. Shaitan Demon, who is one damage short." It looks like it is still gonna be the Shaitan Demon to the orb here. Um, actually, a very interesting maybe debate for anti-rad uh, over the course of keeping the demon alive to deal that self burn uh to lou and get him down lower of course playing a burn deck if your opponent can deal damage to themselves you're fine with that um, and this is and this is a great last nightmare to pick up for lou deals with the ground shaker that shane demon is no longer one damage short of dealing with it how many ground shakers can you have in a row says lou um he challenges him uh, we know that he has none left. If there was another that came down, it wouldn't be the end of the world unless it was followed up with a Cypher's Wrath. But of course, we see that's not going to happen. So looking at the board, looking at the hands, and there's the second Shane Demon. Looking at this right now, man, Lou is looking pretty nice. Yeah, this is a great spot for Lou. Has, you know, 10 damage, maybe just a Wind Soldier short of... Uh, lethal on this upcoming turn. Uh, good response here from Anti-Rad. He has that Kaleem's training and Flash Wind for this extra mobility. Could actually wrap all the way around uh, and hit the Kaleem's follower if he chooses to. Maybe even continue to develop lands up the board so we can go for something like the Scourge Flame Spectre on the next turn. And that'll deal quite a bit of damage over the course of these few attacks. He's actually just going to go for the full race here. This is very aggressive. I can't believe that. Wow, this this is not <laughs> um, proceeding the way I imagined it. There's an Underground Brigand defensively. He's got 10 damage onto his face next turn, but he thinks he can win the race. And it actually looks like he can because of those Shaitan Demons self-damage, like I mentioned. Um, Anti-Rad in a position right now where he has an aggressive land for the Scourge Line Spectre to come down. He has the Feria to play it if he, uh, even if everything on board gets cleared. He has four plus the three that he'll naturally gain. Uh, Anti-Rad does find the Wind Soldier, but that underground uh, Brigand in a spot where it blocks it. So I think this is going to have to be Ooh. Doomsday, but it's still going to be game over just because of that Spectre. Oh my gosh. There's the Doomsday. The entire board is cleared. Anti-Rad is surprised. That's amazing to him. It is Anti-Rad's turn. Like you said, unfortunately, well, fortunately for Anti-Rad, he does have that Scourge Lame Spectre. Lou was expecting some sort of answer. Well played. That was really the only answer that he could have had 
Flame Burst was not enough. There was Cypher's Wrath, couldn't do anything. These games were so incredibly close, but this combat bird deck from Anti-Rad carries him all the way to a 3-0 victory against Lou, who is one of the uh, oldest and one of the best players we've had in Fairy. Of course, Anti-Rad's no slouch himself. Every single player today is really good. But 3-0 with Combat Burn, that should teach you something. Yeah, very surprising uh, just that it's a 3-0. There were a couple games that were very, very close. Um, you would naturally expect the series overall to be close, but the 3-0 definitely doesn't show kind of the caliber of play that it was throughout the course of the game. But Anti-Rad, very smart decision in, in that final game there to just go aggressive, um, playing for the win instead of you know playing not to lose, something that we always talk about. Uh, great series of games there by both players. Uh, that concludes with Anti-Rad advancing to the Grand Finals. Uh, let's send it back for some analysis on these games.